I got some time in between a couple of our guided overland trips that we've been doing here in West Virginia to outfit this boat so that we can live out of it even more this summer. Let me walk you through some of the steps and some of the decisions that I made to get us to the build here today. The boat was pretty expensive two years ago when I bought it and I didn't have a lot of cash to dump into a frame and I didn't really even know what I wanted and I wanted to give myself something that was cost effective that I could grow into that I could use the parts from if I ever built a larger frame to fit in this white wire raft. All right, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the air out of these thwarts um, and get these thwarts lifted out of the boat. And we're just gonna drop some of the air out of these, lift these out of the way. We will no longer need these in the boat because the frame's gonna hold it together. There is suddenly a lot of room in here without these thwarts. I'm really excited about that. That's what's gonna be fun about this boat is it's really gonna open the space up by not having these large thwarts in here. So those have been removed. Next, I'm gonna take the clamps out, the fishing rod holders, the seat, the oar towers I'm gonna to remove. I'm gonna disassemble this stern frame and get everything laid out on the floor. And then I'm gonna pump this boat up, right? I'm gonna clean it out a little bit and then we're gonna see what we got. Yeah, this raft has been an absolute blast. We spent a lot of time in it on Sundays, especially on the New River. It's like a 15 minute bicycle ride and it's like a four hour float. So it's kind of cool how it all works out because there's a big bend in the river. That's kind of our new favorite section on the upper new, the section of the upper new that we've done in the past, we have somebody run a shuttle for us and then uh, drive the truck to the takeout. And uh, when we get off the river, Truck sitting there waiting for us. We just load up the boat and come home. I'm definitely gonna measure that foot bar. I think there's a smaller version of that. And I think that would be ideal for the raft. Um, and then I'm going to get the cushion for the top of this dry box. Um, I'm gonna get some more straps and uh, I'm gonna call it a night and check in with you tomorrow. Okay, I am back and I have my top pad for my aluminum box. I've got two sets of NRS three foot straps and I was actually able to find a 60 inch um, foot bar from NRS2 as well. That's gonna be much better than this huge 72 inch bar that I have here. It's gonna fit in the raft real nice. We're gonna put the top plate on the aluminum box and we're gonna size up the frame and get this boat inflated. Okay, I'm not quite sure where I wanna put the aluminum box yet, so I'm gonna hold off on putting the top pad on until my cooler gets here. I went ahead and ordered a Canyon Coolers Prospector 103. So really excited about putting this in here. It's gonna sit on top of the frame real nice. I got the seat cushion for it too. So that could be my seat or this dry box. I'm not sure yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mock up the frame. So one of the more challenging pieces of this project for me was finding the right size frame rail for my boat. There's plenty of options out there, especially from NRS. So I talked with a couple of my rafting buddies, talked with Bobby over at Pro Fishing in Fayetteville, and everybody recommended that we take the frame rail to where the rocker starts, right? There's a seam across this raft in particular at the rocker on both ends. So we picked 72 inch frame rails, right? So then you talk about how, why we went, we decided to go with 60 inch bars instead of 54 to get the frame rails off of the center line of the boat and closer to the D-rings. These cross tubes are gonna hold either the seat or the cooler. Wow, things are really coming together here. The foot bar looks great. I wish I would have had this size when I put the stern frame on. I could eliminate some of this rubbing possibly. Either way, 
This is coming together fantastic, super easy to do, right? Again, everything's loose so I can move it back and forth. I don't know where I'm gonna put the cooler or the dry box yet. I need to also understand and do a little bit of research on where I need to have the paddle set up. Um, there was a formula to that when I was an open boater. We'd go six inches off center. That's where we put our pedestal so that when we hang down, you know, and lean forward a little bit, our weight was right over the center of the boat. So I wanna make sure that we set it up the way we need to. It's gonna be pretty dynamic at the end of the day. We're gonna have more weight in the front and more weight in the back, but I'd prefer to set this up. So if I'm paddling it by myself and it's loaded down, I know where the center point is. So enough talk, let me get the aluminum dry box and set it in here just to see what it looks like. I cannot wait. That's a little tight, a little tight, a little tight, a little tight, a little tight. This is too big. Last time you saw me, I tried to put a dry box in the boat and it was six inches too wide. I called up Rocky Mountain Raft and said, hey, I made a mistake. I picked up the wrong size box. They said, no problem, we'll make you up a 32 inch box and it'll fit in the SB130 perfectly. As you can see behind me, I've got some things done to the raft. I'm gonna walk you through how I put those things together, especially the swivel seat. It can be a little bit complicated without instructions. What I'm trying to do is reuse as many parts as I can. I've acquired a stern frame for the boat. When we first started breaking things down, you saw that, and you even saw it mocked up here. So this is gonna be a rear seat to allow people to fish, give people an options when they're sitting in the boat. I couldn't find any real instructions for how to put this together. So I'm gonna to attempt to do this the right way, disassemble it, and we'll put it back together again and put it on the boat. If you're gonna be starting from scratch, you're gonna to wanna to buy this adapter plate to use the swivel. It does not come with the adapter plate directly from NRS. So if you're gonna be mounting to a cross tube, you need this adapter plate. In order to mount this up, I'll just find the center of the tube, measure off the center, and put the U-bolts on and tighten it down. You're not gonna be able to tighten these afterwards, so you wanna make sure these are good and snug. There are slots inside of the adapter plate that line up with the slots on the swivel. Like I said, again, a washer on the bottom, a washer on the top. You wanna make sure that you bring the bolt in from the bottom as this is sitting here right now. Um, any excessive overhang needs to be on this side because if it's on the other side, it's gonna conflict with some of these bolts and rub as you're rotating the seat around. These will need to be locked down nice and tight before you move on to the next step. I'm gonna bring these bolts out all the way to the edge so I can make sure that everything is centered on the swivel and on the adapter. The good part about being a round bar like this is that you can adjust the tilt of the seat with the clamps that are actually on the boat. All right, before we move on to the seat, let's show you what we got here. Again, these are the slots. I've moved the bolts all the way to the outside of each of these, everything is nice and snug. Okay, I've got my seat in place right now, and there are NRS markings here that are your guide for the front and the back of the seat. It doesn't matter which is the front or the back, but so long as these are facing front and back, you've got it set up right. What I like to do is go a little bit tight and then back it off to make sure I got the threads. You definitely don't want any tension as you're, as you're screwing these in, because you could easily cross thread them, and we don't want to do that. You don't want to go crazy tight with it, okay? You just want it nice and snug. Okay, there you go. That's how you install the swivel seat adapter plate from NRS. Okay, I'm not gonna disassemble the stern bars. They're already mounted here to the crossbar. Um, and the crossbar is mounted close to the end of the frame bars, which is down here on the sides, right? I can see a little bit of aluminum right near the plug and I think that's gonna work pretty good. If I need to move the whole assembly forward, I can easily adjust these two crossbars and leave the seat in place. All right, I'm gonna slide this assembly into place. I'm not worried about centering it up just yet. I can do that by kind of snugging the U-bolts down and moving this side to side, and I'll take some measurements to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Washer on top, and that on top of that. Okay, everything's on there finger tight. As you can see, I can adjust the tilt towards the front of the boat or the back of the boat. 
I'm gonna find a good level spot here. And I'm gonna do slow turns and watch the level. Still at 14. Not gonna really need the level anymore. We've got it in a pretty good spot. We can make an adjustment on the river if we have to. So now that I got the right size box for my 13 foot Rocky Mountain raft, let's go over some measurements and give you what you need to know. This box lid measures 32 and a half by just at 16 inches, right? Underneath of the lid, the box itself measures 32 inches by 15 and a half. So the measurement that you really need to know are the outside dimensions underneath these frame tabs, right? So these tabs are gonna rest on top of the crossbars in the boat. And I'm looking right at about 15 and seven eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna set my crossbars on the boat where this dry box is gonna rest to 15 and seven eighths of an inch. This is a good looking box. I've got some cloths in there to kind of protect things as I drop it in, even though this thing is bound to get bumped and beaten along the way. I'd like it to at least look nice as I'm putting this in here. So there it is, the Rocky Mountain Raft. Dry box is in place. I'm not gonna tighten down the crossbars or anchor this box in place until I can get a seat pad mounted on top. So as soon as that comes in, I'm gonna pull the dry box. I'm gonna stick that seat pad down on it. I'm gonna put the dry box in, I'm gonna anchor in place. Up front, we have an NRS camp table. I did not buy the camp table specifically for taking the top off of. I've had the camp table for years. And honestly, it's been just sitting in my garage and collecting dust. This is gonna make for an excellent platform for people to sit on or potentially stand on as we're fly fishing on the rivers here in West Virginia. We'll check back in next time when the rest of my parts come in and let's get this boat wrapped up. All right, one more night. This is the last one here in the garage putting this boat together. As you can see behind me, I've got the towers in place for the oars. The fishing platform and the seat in the front is dialed in. The dry box is in place. It made for a great seat this week and I was able to get the boat out and get everything dialed in and put in its place, right? And give everything a thorough test for fishing and for recreation. The kids really enjoyed sitting out on the platform and diving off and climbing in and having a good time. My buddy Jeremy had a great time standing up on that platform and casting us some flies. So we got a few pieces here in front of me left to install. I've got some NRS straps to anchor things down. I've got a pad to put on top of the dry box. And I'm gonna go over a little bit how we're gonna put this Paco pad up on top of the fishing platform so that when we're on long floats, the kids and our guests and things like that have a very comfortable place to sit. So let's get started. The NRS camp table worked fantastic on these crossbars. Again, this is the top of the camp table, not the frame that's included, right? So we're really saving on some weight on this raft. I used some longer NRS straps, doubled over to anchor this down just for testing purposes this weekend and it worked fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace these with some shorter straps and then we're gonna talk about the Paco pad. All right, so I've got the two foot NRS straps. We're gonna go under and over once. We're gonna cross the strap and come up. What I wanna do before I get too tight is I wanna make sure this thing is hanging down right where I want it and cinch it down, right? So I'm not gonna to get too crazy with it because I wanna measure this so that I know where it's sitting uh, before I kind of tighten things down. So let's move on to the back one. So this is the small Paco pad and it's a perfect fit for this NRS camp table. I'm really excited about it. The grommets come just to the frame rails. I've let this self inflate. It's got a foam insert in it, but if you wanted it to be a little bit firmer, you could put some air on it as well. My son measures 52 inches or so, and this is 54 to 56 inches long. So we're gonna get some life out of it for camping purposes, but for recreation only, this is gonna be fantastic. I'm not gonna strap this down because we are gonna be fishing this weekend, but I wanted to show you how perfectly this fits on the NRS camp tabletop. 
All right, this is the NRS dry box pad, right? It's self-adhesive bottom. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. It measures at 38 by 16, and this box is 32 by 16. As you can see, I've cut it down using my neighbor's bandsaw. We did preserve the tapered ends of this and cut it at a slight angle and actually cut it back on the length and width so that it would allow us for a quarter inch on each side of this. We don't want this thing peeling up on the end, so recessing it back a little bit, I think is gonna eliminate some of that. I'm gonna put a little bit of alcohol on the paper towel here and wipe off the surface a little bit to prep it. We want a good surface for that adhesive to adhere to. I'm gonna use a piece of painter's tape here where I know I want the edge of this to be so I know roughly where to start laying this thing down. I'm also going to put on some uh, gloves here because I don't want oil getting on, oil from my hands getting on the adhesive part of this pad. All right, that didn't go completely as planned. I've got a new dog in here and I ran out of space on my memory card as I was starting to put this thing down. I'm not too sure where I left off. What I did was I laid this thing out, put some painter's tape down here where I wanted to start. I pulled off the first layer of backing and applied it down to where I thought it needed to be and proceeded to pull each layer off the back until I rolled this thing out, pressing out the outer bubbles along the way and getting this thing to line up where I wanted it to. One thing that I did notice was that if this comes off to one side or the other, you can twist it a little bit to push it to the back or the front. But all the way down, we've got a nice good edge on the front, on the back, and on the ends. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this thing over, put some weight on it, and let it sit overnight. Okay, I've got the dry box flipped over, got some weight on top of it, I'm gonna give the adhesive tape on the back end of the pad, some time to set in. While we're waiting, I wanted to show you actually how we put the dry box in place. So I've got carabiners around the webbing that hold the floor in, and I'm using NRS straps up to the grab handles of the dry box to keep it anchored against these bars. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on these crossbars to get them as close to the box as possible, and then I tighten the bolts down. I'm gonna use a three foot NRS strap to go down to the carabiner, and back up to the grab handle of this dry box. Let me get my tape measure. I'll measure side to side, get the dry box where I want it, and then I'll start squeezing in these crossbars. What I wanna do is I wanna put a little bit of pressure on this to push it in on the dry box as hard as I can with just using one hand, and then I'll go and anchor the other side. I can't stress it enough that when you're tightening these stainless U-bolts to do equal turns on each side as you're tightening them down because you don't want to get one side too tight because then you could strip the other side pretty easily. You want to pull them down very evenly. Give them a good snug torque. You don't want to go too crazy with it. About 15 and 5 eighths, pretty good. So I'm no expert at this, I'm learning. I used to sit in the back and now I'm in the center. So I watched a couple videos on YouTube and started paying attention to what they were saying. And what they were saying was, in a comfortable position, you should be able to move the forward equidistant as you can move it backwards and forth, right? So when I'm at this position, my angle from center should be the same angle as I am from center in this position. Set it up as you want to on dry land, get the boat out in the water, carry your tools with you and make adjustments from there. All right, I think we're there. We've got the seat on the back, the swivels. We've got the rod holder. We've got the dry box and the pad on top of it. I've got a place for my beer. The oar towers are set where they need to be and the platform is perfect. Next step, let's put some air in this boat and cinch down the straps. Safety is paramount when you're on the river and that's why I carry a throw bag with me. Throw bags aid in swimmer recovery and boat recovery as well, and serve as a good tool to secure the bow of your boat when you're camped on shore. 
Find a good throw bag and include it in any build that you do. One final thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take and run an NRS strap underneath the crossbar that holds the seat in place. I'm gonna double it over. The reason I'm doing that is because you can see how this is lifting up. I don't want it to ride down the road and bounce. So this is a two foot strap. I'm gonna put it on there. That kind of cinch it down in place. This raft is gonna change no matter what trip that we're doing. Everything's set up exactly the way it needs to be for fishing and recreational day floats. But the one step that we are missing is cold storage. I've ordered a Prospector 103 from Canyon Coolers and it's gonna sit real nice where the dry box is or it could sit real nice where this platform is depending upon what type of trip that we're doing. When the cooler comes in, we'll show you what it looks like. But for now, that's the MSO raft build. Thanks for watching. Show yourself.